So we have our four different kinds of physics concepts. What I hope to do right now is identify units and show how rotational motion of an object correlates with the tangential linear motion of the rim. So we've identified theta as a ratio of length to radius. So theta is equal to L over R is unitless, no units. Omega is the rate of change of theta. So this is unitless, this is per second. Alpha, the rate of change of omega, how fast it's speeding up or slowing down, is a second time derivative, is seconds to the negative two. Seconds squared in the denominator. And then we go to kinetic energy. We know that this gives us seconds squared in the denominator. And we better have joules because it's still kinetic energy, even if it's rotational kinetic energy. So we need this to be equal to a joule, which is a kilogram meter squared per second squared. And so this right here must be kilogram meter squared. So the moment of inertia is a kilogram meter squared, which is nice because we said this correlates to mass times radius squared. And angular momentum is L, which is kilogram meter squared times omega, which is per second. This is going to be kilogram meter squared per second, which is not kilogram meters per second, which is regular momentum. Angular momentum has an extra unit of length in the numerator. Lastly, torque. Torque is how hard I'm turning something, which correlates not just to force, but to the distance I am from the center. So you know, if I wanted to turn this really hard, I wouldn't grab it like this, I'd grab it like this. So what are the units going to be? This is kilogram meters squared, and alpha is per second squared. It's interesting because these units are the same as energy. But torque is not energy. And so we won't call this a joule. We can call this a newton meter. But torque, you can see if I'm trying to turn something and I don't move, I don't do any work on it, I don't change its energy. Just like if I put force on something and I don't move it. We'll talk about this more later. How does this angular motion correlate to linear motion? We can turn this equation around to be length is equal to theta times r, which just says that the distance this moves is equal to the radius times the angular displacement. And so that makes sense. Sure, if I rotate myself a little bit, if I rotate myself, my finger is going to move, but not as much as if I have my arm extended. Right? So the length that this finger travels is equal to the change of angle times the length of the arm. Now the speed at which it travels is equal to dl dt. And so this would just be d theta r dt, right? But r is a constant. The radius doesn't change in a wheel. And so this would just be r d theta dt, which is r omega. And so what that says is that the speed of the rim as I'm turning it is equal to how fast the angle is changing, omega, times the length of the arm. And yes, if I'm rotating around in a circle, we can look at how fast my finger goes. If I lengthen my arm, my finger is moving faster. So if a bicycle wheel is spinning, the speed of the rim is omega in radians per second times the radius of the wheel. But if it's on a bicycle that's on the ground moving along, at the point of contact, the wheel is motionless. It's touching the road. There's no slippage. And so that rim is stationary, and therefore the axle must be moving forward. How fast? If the rim is stationary, the hub must be moving at a speed of r omega, which means the bike is moving forward at r omega. And then the question is, if a bicycle wheel is turning at omega, and you're on the ground moving along, how fast is the top of the rim moving? Lastly, if there's angular acceleration, meaning omega is increasing, we look at the speed of the rim is also increasing. And there's a number of ways we can show that the tangential acceleration is equal to radius times the angular acceleration.
that is the acceleration of my finger is equal to my angular acceleration times the length of my arm. But that would be acceleration along this tangential path. How can we show that? Acceleration is equal to the rate of change of velocity, which is equal to the rate of change of r omega. r can come out, and we have r times d omega dt. And d omega dt is just alpha, angular acceleration. And so we've gone through the units, and we've also described how the motion at the rim, the tangential motion of the rim, is connected to the angular motion of the solid body.